Thank you, Whitaker. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Columbus, an inclusive religious community of people supporting each other in the search for truth and meaning. I'm Rick Spradlin, your service leader. The chalice is the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. It speaks to us of reason, tolerance, and freedom, but also of compassion, respect, and love. May its flame ever warm and illuminate our lives. And now for our morning announcements. We're having our first live in-person service this Sunday at 11 o'clock. It'll be held outside with masks and social distancing enforced. So if you're watching this early enough, you might be able to make it here in time. And now one of the ways we proclaim the vitality of our fellowship is through sharing brief and personal joys and concerns. I'll start by lighting a candle for any unspoken fears and concerns. And now I wish to light a candle for our democratic republic. May civility survive this election. And I also wish to light a candle for Mark Berger, one of our members. He's having some health issues. So please drop him a line and let him know that you're thinking about him. If you have any joys or concerns that you would like to be shared, please email those to our president, Hal Majet or our office administrator, Brenda Stevens, at uufcga at gmail.com. Now let us once again affirm the seven principles which sum up the core values that Unitarian Universalist congregations support and promote. Number one, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Two, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Three, the acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Four, the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Five, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Six, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And seven, respect for the inter interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And now for a celebration of life toast. If you have something to drink, you can use that or just toast with me in spirit. We celebrate life. We celebrate life with its beauty and its pain. We lift these cups in tribute to the achievements of human minds and hands and in sensitivity to the frustrations of misfortune and heartache. Not fixing blame or credit for the outcome of chance, sensing the risk, savoring the joy, sharing it all, knowing of the certainty of death and remembering the value of each moment we drink our toast of celebration to this time, to the future, to each other, to the throbbing of the earth and sea and sky with life. Together, we drink this toast in celebration of life. And now for our offering. If you'd like to contribute, you can mail your contribution to UU Fellowship of Columbus, Box 698, Forts in Georgia, 31808. We have a PayPal account set up as well. And now Whitaker will play for us.
Thank you, Whitaker. And now a reading from one of our members, Danielle Neal. I want to share a reading by Dana E. Warsnop titled, I Want to Be With People. Often people say that they love coming to a place with so many like-minded people. I know just what they're getting at, and I know that they aren't quite getting it right. I don't want to be with a bunch of people who think just like me. I want to be in a beloved community where I don't have to think like everyone else to be loved, to be eligible for salvation. I want to be with people who value compassion, justice, love, and truth, though they have different thoughts and opinions about all sorts of things. I want to be with independent-minded people of good heart. I want to be with people who have many names and no name at all for God. I want to be with people who see in me goodness and dignity, who also see my failings and foibles, and who still love me. I want to be with people who feel their interconnection with all existence and let it guide their footfalls upon the earth. I want to be with people who see life as a paradox and don't always rush, rush to resolve it. I want to be with people who are willing to walk the tightrope that is life and who will hold my hand as I walk mine. I want to be with people who let church call them into a different way of being in the world. I want to be with people who support, encourage, and even challenge each other to a more ethical living. I want to be with people who inspire one another to follow the call of the Spirit. I want to be with people who covet to be honest, engaged, and kind, who strive to keep their promises and hold me to the promises I make. I want to be with people who give of themselves, who share their hearts and minds and gifts. I want to be with people who know that human community is often warm and generous, sometimes challenging and almost always a grand adventure. In short, I want to be with people like you. Thank you for being you and have a great Sunday. Thank you, Danielle. Human beings are meant to live together. We're social. We are drawn together into tribes and communities. And when our communities are large enough, we form nations. But as with everything else in the universe, there is a yin and a yang, a push and a pull, an inside and an outside, a breath in and a breath out. That very nature of our being that pulls us together into families and communities and makes us so protective of those that we bond with also makes us suspicious and antagonistic towards those outside our group. Here we are in the middle of a pandemic that so far has taken the lives of a million people worldwide. And in the middle of this pandemic, we find ourselves involved in a horrendous election cycle. I'm writing this on the day of the first debate between Biden and Trump. A debate that I haven't seen yet, at least at the time of this writing. A debate whose outcome, just like the coming 2020 election, I have no idea what will be. I do know that it's extremely unlikely that any of the debates will change the minds of voters. We all seem to have our mind pretty much made up on this one. I do know, even before the debate, that our current president will interrupt his opponent to prevent him from speaking. It's childish behavior, but it's also a matter of years of public record. The president doesn't like for anyone else to talk unless he agrees with them. I'm not trying to be partisan in saying this, but as I said, it's a matter of public record. My neighbor and I, we get along just fine. We've had many good-natured good conversations over the years, and we borrow each other's tools. But we're as far apart politically as you can be. Now, I wasn't going to politicize our neighborhood. 
But my neighbor put up two Trump signs in his yard, which, of course, that's his right. He also put up a Trump flag. Now, not the kind that the blue flag with Trump's name on it. No, I'm talking about his is an American flag with Trump's name written across it. In my opinion, no individual, especially a politician, should have their name on the flag. And as an Eagle Scout, that one irritated me far more than the other political signs. So I responded today by putting out two Biden signs, which I made sure his were like this, mine are like this, much larger. And one of them says, um, Veterans for Biden. You see, he's retired military, so I know he's going to notice that one, retired army. He and I belong to different political tribes. And our democratic republic stands on the edge of a knife due to the tension between our two tribes. Russian military intelligence officers hacked into the DNZ and shared political data through a third party. They spread conspiracy theories through social media. They are actively involved in pitting different groups of Americans against one another. The president refuses to commit any resources toward curbing their involvement because they're trying to help him. Journalists attempt to correct the falsehoods they spread, but the president joins in with those in our country who value profit more than democracy. Alternative news has long been a profitable enterprise. Uh, Trump didn't invent that. And the only way to build a market for alternative news and use it to sell advertising is to attack mainstream media, otherwise known as professional journalism. This has gone on for decades. Trump hasn't invented anything that's going, that's going on. He's just amped it up and repeated it over the years so much that the public has come to accept it as the new normal. It's in times like these that I have to remind myself that the beloved community that we so often speak of is not just a goal, it's a roadmap. The end does not justify the means, but it is the means that will determine the end. The term beloved community was coined by the early 20th century American philosopher named Josiah Royce, born 1855, died 1916. But most of us learned it not from Royce, but from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who often spoke of the beloved community as his ultimate goal. At a bus boycott in Birmingham, Alabama, Dr. King was speaking about the larger movement which they were building. Dr. King said, the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opposition into friends. It is this love which will bring about miracles in the hearts of men. Our goal is to create a beloved community, and this will require a qualitative change in our souls as well as a quantitative change in our lives. It's important to note that not only what Reverend King told us about the beloved community, about what it is, but also take note about what it isn't. It isn't about beating your opponent. It isn't about conquest or revenge or humiliating your opponent. The beloved community is about utilizing the six principles of nonviolence to bring about social change. The six principles of nonviolence are, number one, Nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. It is active, nonviolent resistance to evil. Number two, nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding. The end result of nonviolence is redemption and reconciliation. Number three, Nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not defeat people. Nonviolence recognizes that evildoers are also victims. 
Number four, nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform. Nonviolence willingly accepts the consequences to its acts. Number five, nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. Nonviolence resists violence to the spirit as well as to the body. Nonviolence love is active and not passive. Nonviolence love does not sink to the level of the hater. Love restores community and resists injustice. Nonviolence recognizes the fact that all life is interrelated. And number six, nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. The nonviolent resistor has deep faith that justice will eventually win. I don't believe that I will ever change the minds of my friends and family that support Trump or his notion of the anti-humanitarian America. All I can do is put a face on the left-leaning liberals that he attacks. When someone on Facebook says that liberals are trying to destroy America, I'm there to remind them that, hey guys, I'm who you're talking about, and you know me. You know I love America. If I try to change their minds, all I'll do is cause them to dig in their heels and resist that much more. No, the future of our nation depends on that largest group's largest of groups of any election, those that don't vote at all. A hundred million Americans typically do not vote in elections. We're not going to have a democratic republic unless we can get a larger percentage to participate in that democracy. And I doubt that the current political climate is going to encourage many of them to take part. But the future of our democracy and the goal of building the beloved community lies in studying their views and reaching out to this untapped wellspring of potential voters. Thank you for listening. And now before we extinguish the chalice, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see each other soon. We extinguish the chalice here that it might glow gently in our hearts as we leave this place. And now for our closing words. With unity of spirit, we go our ways in universal fellowship until we meet again. And now Whitaker will play us home. Whitaker.